This is a quick tutorial on how to create an LED smart grid that connects to the Apple HomeKit system. The main components of this project are a Raspberry Pi Zero wireless to handle the communication, an Arduino to run the LEDs, the LED strips, some white acrylic, and a power supply. The key to this project is the LEDs we're going to be using. They are individually addressable, meaning you can individually change the color of every single pixel on the strip. I'd recommend using the WS2812B model. They're very common, cheap, and they work quite well. I mentioned before that this is Apple HomeKit compatible. What this means from a practical perspective is that you can control these lights from any Apple device. How it works is your Apple device communicates over the Wi-Fi network to the Raspberry Pi, which is running a software called HomeBridge. The Raspberry Pi interprets the commands, sends them to the Arduino, and the Arduino is the device that actually drives the individual LEDs. HomeKit is an Apple-designed standard for smart home devices. Any device you buy online that says it's Apple compatible is Apple HomeKit compatible. HomeBridge is a software that runs on Raspberry Pi and it emulates a device that is compatible with Apple HomeKit. What this means is you can configure HomeBridge to emulate any sort of smart device you want and connect it on your network. As far as Apple is concerned, that Raspberry Pi is just as authentic as a wireless switch you might buy at Best Buy. For this tutorial, I programmed in two different patterns for the grid. A red and yellow fireplace-like pattern for ambient lighting, and a bright white-blue pattern for the morning time. The first part of the project is assembling the actual LED grid. The first step here is to take a lot of careful measurements of the size of your board, the size of your LED strips, and do a little bit of quick math to figure out the spacing. Mark it out, plan ahead, and then peel off the adhesive and lay down the strips. You really only get one chance to make sure you have a good seal with a 3M backing. The data flows through the strip in one direction, indicated by arrows on the strip. You want to assemble the board in a snaking S pattern that zigzags back and forth down the board following these red arrows. So make sure you flip every other strip so that the data flows in the right direction. I've included a test program in the files that will run a single white LED down the strip so you can make sure it's all wired up correctly. Once you open up the Arduino code, you'll need to change a couple of variables to make it work with your project. First, you'll need to set data pin to the pin of the Arduino that outputs to the data channel of the LEDs. In my case, it was digital pin 6. You'll also need to change the number of LEDs from 256 to the actual number in your strip. Additionally, you might need to change color order. For me, I found GRB worked, but based on your vendor, you might need to choose a different color combination. This very professional photo shows the basic wiring for the Arduino and the Raspberry Pi. Connecting the two devices are two wires, red and blue. Each correspond to one of the two light modes I have. Remember, fire or wake up. Basically, the Raspberry Pi just sends a digital output to the Arduino based on which signal it wants. Since the Raspberry Pi hasn't been set up yet, you can test the Arduino by plugging one of the cables into the 3.3 or 5 volt output on the Arduino. This will trick into thinking the Raspberry Pi is communicating with it, and it'll activate one of the two light modes. Once you've tweaked the code and gotten it running just the way you want, now it's time to actually program the smart capabilities of this pretty cool LED grid. Since there are already a thousand great tutorials out there about how to program a Raspberry Pi, I'm not going to cover that. If you do need a starting point, I suggest googling noobs, and no, that's not an insult, it's actually a great way to get started with a Raspberry Pi. This tutorial is going to assume you've already got a Raspberry Pi set up, running, and connected to the internet. 
So now I'm going to go through the commands you'll use to install Homebridge on the Raspberry Pi. I'll run through them real fast here and you can just copy and paste them from the comments and the support material. Step 1 is the standard sudo apt-get update and upgrade just to prepare your system for Homebridge. Up next, you need to install ARM v61 for the Raspberry Pi. If you're using a 0 like I am, use 61. If you're using a regular Raspberry Pi, you'll want 71. The precise link might change in the future, so you might have to Google the correct Node.js distribution. Next, you'll need to extract the files using the tar command, cd into that extracted folder directory, and then use this command to recursively copy all those files into the user local directory. Use these commands to install some necessary libraries that run with Homebridge. And this is the actual command that's going to install Homebridge onto your system. Step 1 is to open up a terminal in the Raspberry Pi, or like I did, just SSH in. Once you're in, you're going to use npm to install a plugin called Homebridge-GPIO. This is a very simple and versatile plugin that emulates a switch on the network and connects that switch to one of the GPIOs on your Raspberry Pi. If you're polite like me, you try the command like normal, and it of course fails due to permission errors. At that point, a hammer is your best friend, and you can try it again with sudo. That should work out much better. While this is installing, it's worth noting that you can search all these plugins. They're all listed online, and they do a million different things. So whether you want to control a motion sensor, or a garage door, or a smart lock, or blinds, they've got a plugin for it. It's pretty cool. So now that the new plugin is installed, cd to a folder called .homebridge. This is where all the files are. And then type homebridge, and that's going to manually launch homebridge. It's going to throw up a few debug lines showing all of your accessories and plugins as they load. This is good debug so you can see what you have installed. Once it successfully starts, it's going to show a QR code. Now you can go in with your iPhone to the Home app. You can choose to add an accessory that's not listed, and you can scan that QR code, and it's going to add Homebridge to your Apple network. Uh, the installation really can't get any simpler than that. Open up a terminal in the Raspberry Pi, or SSH in like I did. And then you want to edit a file called config.json, located in the .homebridge folder. This is pretty much the only file on Homebridge you'll probably need to mess with. It's the configuration file that sets up all the different devices you want Homebridge to emulate. You'll see that there's two accessories listed here, one called Fire and one called Wake Up. This means that the Homebridge is going to emulate two different switches on the network. Fire is connected to pin 16 of the GPIO, and then Wake Up is connected to pin 18. If you make some changes here and Homebridge fails to start, I highly recommend copying and pasting this into a JSON syntax formatter just so you can make sure you didn't leave out a parentheses or a comma somewhere. So once you've verified Homebridge works, you'll need to set up a quick way for it to start automatically every time your Raspberry Pi starts up. There are already a lot of methods to automatically start a process whenever your Raspberry Pi boots up, so if you have a favorite, go ahead and use it. Right here, we're going to use PM2. So go ahead and install that through NPM. And once it's installed, type in PM2 startup, and this is going to sort of initialize the software. Once it runs, it's going to give you a line of code that you can copy, paste, and then execute.
Once that's all done, type PM2 start home bridge, and that's going to start home bridge. Now once this process starts up, uh, try to toggle the outputs using your Apple devices just to verify Homebridge did indeed start up properly. If it did, type in PM2 save and you're good to go. The next time your Raspberry Pi reboots, Homebridge will automatically start with it. As far as the project goes, that's about it. Good luck and show me what you make.